Hey everybody, this is Love is Dead and I'm coming to you with another broadcast of the defense. It is today we have MTW on the dire side versus Storm Games Clan SGC. I haven't heard of Storm Games Clan at all, actually. Um, I assume that they're new, and or at least new to Dota 2. I can't assume that they're new to Dota, and I don't know how they would have gotten here if they were. But they're going to be facing up against MTW, which is one of the top teams right now. So I am excited to see how they go, how they do. They have banned out. I, I'm starting a little late into the draft here, but uh, they have banned out Broodmother, Enchantress, Chen. No push. Just get rid of the push. Uh, Nature's Prophet, uh, Lycanthrope, and Darkseer. Darkseer, great laner. Lycanthrope, a given, and Nature's Prophet, also a popular ban out due to his pushing global ganking action. Anyway, so their first pickup is actually a lone druid, which is interesting because I haven't seen him first pick before. It signals definitely that you're going to be carrying and you're going to be pushing, but they have picked up Lashrac as well, so that is two huge pushing heroes. They're pretty much signaling to MTW what they're going to be doing. I don't think they could throw any curveballs here. So we'll see if that works against them, uh, works for them. I hope it doesn't work against them. But I know Cinderin is quite a master drafter. If you ever listen to his commentaries on the defense, um, he may be a little bit dry, but the man knows his Dota. Anyways, he is going to answer here with the standard thing, is what I would think, is an Enigma and Invoker pickup, which will allow them to have a good amount of ganking power. Uh, Enigma will be in the jungle, he'll be coming out to support, you know, just, even the Malefist stun can do a lot of damage. Tidehunter is actually going to be SGC's pickup, and Lich is going to be MTW's pickup, so they're looking to screw up uh, the lane, either the Tidehunter lane or the Lone, Lone Druid lane. I don't think, I haven't seen a pro match put Lone Druid in the jungle, he actually does well in lane when you know how to use him. And yeah, Lich, uh, Lich is going to be a problem. Mm. He's he's a huge problem laning. And if they want to keep Tidehunter down, they could do that pretty easily. Uh, uh, it's hard to say exactly where Tidehunter is going to be right now. Actually, it's hard to say where Lone Druid. Yeah, he's probably going to be in the bottom lane. They'll track middle lane. Tidehunter. They could I decide to go. They either need some kind of support jungler or they need to run a tri lane and let Lone Druid be alone in the lane. I'm going to ban out Tinker. Tinker has been, uh, he's if he's not first banned and not picked up, he's, he's usually been banned out. He hasn't made it through in a while. He is able to push outside of the base, and that's sort of where the metagame has been going lately. And I've been seeing these, like, Sand King carries, or at least they're played by the carry on the team. I will be interested to see what they're going to decide to pick up here. They have uh, they have a lot of team fight. Enigma plus Lich. You don't want the Chain Frost and the Black Hole. Oh man, that's too much damage. Invoker then sends his Meteor in. There you go. There's your team fight. What else do you really need except for a tank and a carry? Someone to make. Maybe they're going to ban out BS too. So they don't have to worry about the swap. Beastmaster going to be the ban out. They don't want to give that hero to MTW. MTW still have yet to pick up a solo laner. Windrunner is still available to them, though, so I'm kind of surprised they decided to go Beastmaster versus Windrunner. I'm not that surprised. It's kind of a toss-up, really. I'm not exactly sure which side MTW, which hero MTW favors for the solo lane. And uh, have Shadow Demon and CK Band. Final picks are coming up. Give me some good guys. Who we got on the SGC side anyway? Kranich, Offak, Offake, Ofak, Warlog, Professor Headshot, and Tulix. Tulix I've seen before. Haha. -ha. But I don't I don't recognize the other names. Uh, on the MTW side, there's Cinder and Funzi, Sock, Sock, I'm Sock, Bucking Mad. I'm gonna go by. Um, gonna go by Toby's example and Kebab. So Queen of Pain is going to be the pickup for the fourth one. This is a push gank lineup, which is not a complete 
And they do have carry potential. Well, it's like everyone's picking these lineups that are all... They have everything, really. They got a lot of gank mid-game. No, have a lot early game. They got nothing early game. And they might want to pick up a Venomancer. Venomancer or VS. And then, well, they would need, or maybe someone to run a try. No, Queen of Pain can take a solo lane. Uh, no, she's usually solo, but I don't think she's going to be. Windburner is going to be their pickup for the solo lane because they still have it available to them. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how this laning situation is going to work. I, I suppose they could run a tri lane of Tidehunter, Lashrak, Queen of Pain. No, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They do need a big support hero like a like a VS or Crystal Maiden. They're gonna give a solo. I'm I, I'm assuming they're giving a solo to Lone Druid because he's pretty good on his own. It's not gonna have. Uh, he just have a problem with Lich coming up against him, or they're he's probably gonna be up against Windrunner. Yeah, he should be fine against Windrunner because Windrunner is gonna take the hard lane. Which is, these are my assumptions. I'm just kind of talking about them. Hope you don't mind. Bane. Ooh. Okay. So they have. They have. I don't. How does Lone Druid fit into this? Are they doing like a four protect one? These heroes, these ganking heroes, would would lean towards a pushing lineup. Yeah, that would counteract the pushing lineup from MTW, but MTW doesn't have a pushing lineup. They have a ganking lineup. So it's like both teams have huge gank potential where SGC only has carry to back that up because they went two heroes are able to push. I'll give you that, but the rest of them are all hero-oriented killers. And it did ban out a ton of the it did ban out the main pushers. So perhaps it's going to be a 4v4 protect 1 strategy, um, and they're going to hope to make sure that they don't lose it too early game, because once they hit level 6, they have a ton of power to gank and make sure that they can protect their lone druid, and they're ex perhaps expecting to roll through with, through with lone druid after that. MTW kind of have to... I think they they need a tank, really. Weaver. Whoa, Weaver! Nice! All right, so it is... Carry versus carry here, and they have huge ganking, and these games are gonna be nuts. They've just been like gank after gank after gank. Three games that I casted last night were pretty big gank fests. Actually, the Mao's EG one was the least ganky <laughs> of the night. Anyway, so we have Cinderin. He's gonna be taking uh, Invoker. I would expect to go him to go middle lane. That's where he usually sits. Funzy is on the Wind Runner. And Buck, yeah, actually, Funzy actually plays a great Beastmaster, so maybe that's why I decided to ban it out. Anyways, Bucking Mad is on Enigma, and he's great on that. Sock is their carry. Sock is going to be playing the Windrunner, and Kibap, he is on Lich. Down on the Radiant side over here, we have Kranich, he's playing the Queen of Pain. And I'm just going to say he, because I don't know the genders of these folks, but we'll just go with uh, what is typical, unfortunately. Would be happy to see more females in gaming, but they aren't there right now. Comparative, like in percentage-wise, anyways. Okay, so I'm gonna stop talking. Offak, he is gonna be playing Bane. Um, as I said, Cranich is gonna be playing Queen of Pain. Lone Druid is played by I stupidly didn't pick it up. Warlog, and we have Professor Headshot on the Tide Hunter and Tulex. He is on the Lashrak. They need one second from the MTW side. They are looking to counter Ward, but no one has showed up into their lane. And same thing on the Radiant side. They were looking to counter Ward, ward as well, but they both didn't go, didn't get anyone. Um, so I think everyone's going to have their own jungle. They're just going to place Wards in nice aggressive locations. We have Wards up on Enigma. I'm hoping that they really do mean a second, so I don't have to uh, bore you guys with too much boring stuff. So it's hard to exactly see what the lane is. It looks like Professor Headshot's going to stay bottom lane. He could do a solo lane. 
I've seen Tidehunter play solo safe lane. Um, Lone Druid could go mid? No, that doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm, I'm kind of confused as to where what the, what their overall strategy is going to be here with their lanes. Bane is typically a mid hero. Lashrak can play support, but I don't think he's playing too much of a support role. Yeah, he didn't he didn't build himself for support. He actually built himself uh, for a bottle. Let's see, Ofac did not buy for a bottle. Queen of Pain did not buy for a bottle. So I assume that Lishrak is going middle lane. Since Lone Druid, he also bought up as well. Looks like he doesn't have a... What did he spend all of his gold on? Oh, it's the stout shield on the bear. Right. Alright, you know what? You haven't, I've had enough time. Let us cheat. Alright. Where's going to be placed down. Slack's going to look around. Uh, probably going to go top lane. Ooh, and he gets a double damage root right off the bat. And they're going to head into their lane. So we have Bucking Mad is in the jungle. We have Lich going to be supporting the Weaver. And we have a Lone Druid top lane. Solo. Middle lane is going to be a dual middle lane. Which I guess I should have seen. And who knows this is a nice little pretty nice flags, both teams actually. And it's Tulex and Ofac, they are middle lane, Bane and Lashrak versus Cinderin on the invoker. Cind uh, Cinderin is gonna have to be careful. You do not want to get locked down too hard by a Bane and then stunned up by Lashrak. And Funcy actually taking a good amount of damage so far from this Tide Hunter who has decided to go gush first. Windrunner, ooh, he's coming around back for this. He's going to deal some more damage. He's going to deal some right clicks. I think he could send off gush if he really wanted to, but I don't think he's going to get a kill, so I don't think he's going to waste his mana points on that. He has a dust already. Uh, smoke, not dust. Excuse me. And Krennish is going to come down, so it's going to be a dual lane versus a Windrunner. I haven't actually seen a Tidehunter Queen of Pain lane before, but it's melee and uh, Lorraine, so that's not too bad. It uh, looks like Kabap is going to go down and support Cinderin, switching up from the top lane. That is not going to be too much of a problem. Weaver is able to deal a uh, good, good amount of, as you can see, the bear is taking a little bit of damage, and Weaver is very hard to kill. So he's alright with a solo lane that is not going to be too aggressive. Lone Druid can't do a whole lot against him. He's, his bear is kind of slow and Sock is pretty fast. I hear something going on but I didn't see a, her first blood. So I'm not exactly sure what the uh, character is yelling about. Funzie going to go... Looks like she's going to take an Invis rune. Funzie's going to take an Invis rune. What they're going to do with that? Going to stay in lane, not going to go for a gank. Now, where is Bane going? Bane is pulling creeps and jungling just a tiny bit to get some XP. To they guess they assume that Tulex can handle the lane, for now at least. Cinderin not doing too bad, 7 last hits thus far, and Lishrak is 5, so Cinderin is doing well. Do not want to miss First Blood, and I am... Where did Windrunner go? Windrunner is in here, just trying to stop Tidehunter from pulling the lane. Only has, has doesn't even have level 2 yet, so it doesn't have power shot. Which is a little bit of an issue. Oh, well, we have action up here. Funzi is going to be pushed back by Queen of Pain. <coughs> Queen of Pain has level 4 already. So getting 2 in Shadow Strike, this is what I usually see pros play. And we have action out here. Cinder and oh, they have popped off. They have popped off the Edict, and they're taking a lot of damage, but Tulex is now being focused on one more right click from... Ah, oh, First Blood is actually Cinderin, and Lashrak gets away. Bane able to get the last hit right there, and Brain Sap looks like it seems to be what he was able to kill him with. Cinderin is probably not too happy about that. Actually has to walk back. Looks like he has boots uh, in his stash, but didn't pick them up for some reason. I cannot explain. He hasn't decided, he doesn't have a bottle, but uh, with the Quas build, he doesn't need one. Instead of going Exort, he decided to get the mana regen. Uh, 
It looks like Fungi is still having a problem uh, in the in her, in his lane. I guess he was trying to call out to save uh, his, his uh, teammate here from the gank, but wasn't able to pull anything off. So kind of running around actually. Given this free farm down here to Queen of Pain, who's now level 5 with 24 last hits. Really, this Queen of Pain is going to get pretty big, and but she's not a carry, so she doesn't really need the farm. Um, unless I'm going to play her in some way that I am not anticipating. We were getting um, his Shruki, Shruki, his Invis fir first, and then Geminate Attack. Pretty standard. You can see the damage that is able to come out from that invis. The burn damage is really nice. And it looks like he's just going to spawn up another bear. Ooh, he's going to get an entangling roots on Sox. Sox going to stay here though. Just going to deal some damage as he backs off. Is he out of regen? No, he has a ring of regen, so he'll be just all right. Bucking Mad now is smoked up. Level six. So we're going to look for a nice black hole right here, and he's set up pretty nicely. Let's go in initially, Malefice stun, and they're going to wait for the black hole. They do not They do need it. They are going to get themselves Tullux, and I think that is going to be Bane as well, unless he has something up his sleeve. Nope, he goes down. Now some great coordination right there. Bane and Lishak were way too far up being in this area when they didn't know where Enigma was. Did not have that awareness. Now, are there any interesting skill builds here? We got Lone Druid going with his synergy plus Summon Spear Pair, and they're gonna go on. They're gonna go on Lone Druid right now. He actually has pretty low health, so one more right click will be able to finish him off. Enigma actually gets the right, the final right click. I think that was from the Eidolons. Eidolons. And actually, MTW is doing pretty well so far. They have three kills versus one on SGC. SGC did get the first blood, so they have a little. They did get that little bit of gold advantage. The wow, a lot of XP uh, going the way of the dire. And actually, same thing with the farm. We'll see how this works though, because SGC and I hear another Malthus stun. Although I have to figure out where. Nope, he's just farming with it, I suppose. Um, anyways, SGC is lined up a very much for a mid-game. They're going to have a very strong mid-game, which is going to be approaching soon. Actually, not even going Sonic Wave yet. They're waiting until Kronich gets a good amount of uh, farm and gets a little bit bigger with the Scream of Pain, probably Max, and then Sonic Wave, or vice versa. And then we'll be looking to gank with her. And then Tidehunter is getting decent farm here, it seems like. He is level 5. No, he's going to 10 less. So he's not getting decent farm, but um, he's not level 2. He's actually kind of close to his Ravage, and Funzie is still level 2, which is the problem. She's having a hard time with this lane. Kebab is going to come down here to help. Now Cinderin is a solo lane, and Bane knows this. He's only level 4, so he doesn't have his Fiend's Grip. does have a Nightmare and Brain Sap, though. Nightmare is a long stun, is now up for 5 seconds, so hold him in place while Lishrak would be able to deal damage to him when he comes out of it. And then Brain Sap would be able to drain even more HP, plus the e Diabolic Edict. Sock is, how is he doing in this lane? 39 last hits versus a 26 last hits. That is quite fine. I'd be interested to see if this Weaver ended up working out. I'd like to see... Oh, and they, here they go. They have the combination going, and they're going to deal a lot of damage to Cinder, and the Tornado is going to pull, help him save himself, buys him enough time to win Ghost Walk away. Now, this bottom lane is finally pushed up. But Tidehunter now taking the... Taking the um, Taking the creep wave again. So what he's doing right here, if you don't know, he's pulling this creep wave out here at the right time. And then once this gets low, what he'll do is go here and pull that one in. That's what he has been doing. He didn't do it right now, but that's what he has been up to. And that's why that tree is gone. So 
Cinderin teleporting himself back in here. He's level six. Lashrak is what level five actually. So he's doing. He still has a little. He still has a level advantage. Although he is up against two heroes, and that combination uh, can be popped off yet again. Actually, he's not going XR build at all. He is going Wex. And for the faster attack speed, um, and not looking for Sunstrike Meteor. Sock is level 8 versus level 7 Lone Druid. And he's just going to continue to deal this burn damage and be able to harass Warlog around. He's just going to continue to pop, continually pop it off. He has Perseverance, so this only costs 60 mana, and this Perseverance is going to be able to give him a regen of 3.6 per second. So that is not too bad, and he is going to be able to harass in that manner. So if you're kind of wondering how to harass with Tink with uh, Weaver, buy yourself Perseverance, bring a Basilius, and just keep using it and running yourself in there. That deals 120 damage. Um, not exactly sure the tick time. I don't think it's 120 per second. That would be kind of ridiculous, but actually it might not be. It might be that. Cinderinner now still needs to be careful. Trying to get as many less hits as possible, and they have a nightmare up on him again, and it looks like they're gonna get another stun with Lashrek. Diabolic Edict popped off, Brain Sap taking a lot of damage away from him, but the Diabolic Edict finishes him off. Cinderin having a tough time in this lane. Now his friends are here, they're gonna say, You don't wanna do that, you don't do that to my invoker. Don't do that to my invoker. We will cold frost, we will chain frost you and black hole you. But the bottom tower here is gonna be pushed in by Professor Headshot as well as Crunch. It is now a 2 versus 3 game. Let us take a look at the graphs over here. We have gold in favor of the Dire plus the XP well in favor of the Dire. It must be um, on Weaver and Bucking Mad because, yeah, look at look at this. He's got Power Treads, almost finished up a mech as a Soul Ring. Funsy is now level 5, just still kind of low, but should be alright. She didn't die. Funsy didn't die in their lane. <laughs> in the lane. So that is all she needed that is all funds he needed to do. Now Bucky Matt is gonna teleport up here. He has envisioned himself up. They're gonna look for a kill on Warlog. Warlog popping off his druid form his alternate form. What's it called? Druid form. Yep. No, not druid form. That's to go back to it. Can't remember what the name of it's called. Anyways, he pops that off to give himself more HP and runs away from Enigma. It didn't want to get black hole. Or even Malefus stunned. Was able to get back to the tower before he felt like he had enough uh, of an advantage. Now this bottom lane does need to be careful because Tidehunter is level 6 and I guess this is why they decided to push with this. I wonder if, uh, I don't know a whole lot about the eastern side but I know they, queen they play Queen of Pain differently than I'm used to so perhaps it is with her Scream of Pain that they decided to push with. Gives a dam it's a damage of 300. So perhaps that's what they that their strategy was. We have a Bane uh, Illusions actually dealing a good amount of damage to Cinderin, and he's not really dispatching him that quickly. Bane is still now here, and he has his Fiend's Grip available. So that might be seen in a minute. Here we go. We have this bot. This <laughs> top tower has been taken out, and Chronic is going to send herself in gonna pop off a screen of pain. Now we have a stun actually hits onto Bucking Mad. Bucking Mad goes down to Lashrak. Weaver gets away, because Weaver always gets away, if you didn't know. And now we have four heroes right here. They're gonna look for this tower. They have already taken out two... Uh, nope, they didn't get that tower. So they've already taken out one tower. Their tower down here is seven points out of deny range. Hit points. Tower goes down, melts pretty quickly. That bear has his demolish, so that he, so he deals extra damage to towers. It's incredible how much damage that bear can deal to towers. Let's see, uh, what's the numbers on that guy? I don't know if he's going to be able to tell me what numbers. Oh, you know what? I should probably just check him. Yeah. Uh, it's going to deal a bonus 40% damage to towers. So you couple that with the lone druid <laughs> himself, and that's 
Like, that's a pusher, tower pusher right there. Not turning out to be the gank fest I expected thus just yet. They do have tons of ganking power though, that's why I was saying it. Now we're gonna have Enigma coming down here. He pops off his Eidolons. Doesn't actually get in range of the stun. Cinderin now here hanging out by his hanging out by his tower. Only has uh, has cold snap and tornado up, so looking to I don't think he's looking to gank with that. He's not looking to get some kills, just some experience. But now Kabap is available, and I haven't even seen a Chain Frost popped off yet. They need to kind of commit to one of these, and we have... We have an uh, ultimate coming out into Cinder, and he is stunned up. Chain Frost is now pushed out. Oh, Atalus is taking a lot of damage. One more hit from that, he's going to take him down. Cinder goes down in that thing, and the Edict actually still deals a little bit of damage to Kebab. So one versus one trade here, and I think Bane is, yeah, he's not going to die from this, but Lone Druid is coming here middle lane, and he's going to have to push, he's going to push back Windrunner with the bear, entangling roots up on the creep, and we have action up here. Bucking Matt actually gets a, oh, that was so close to escaping that Ravage. He was so close. Wasn't able to get it, however. Okay, now the ganking starts. Now it begins. What level do we have on uh, Windrunner? Windrunner is level 7. I think is Sox getting free farm up here, though. That might not be a great idea. <laughs> Weaver can be a great late game carry, and if you can't kill him, which he is, he just, he goes invisible, runs away, his time lapse pops off every 40 seconds when it's uh, in top and cost no mana at the level 3. So we're going to have to... Lushrak is going to try to stop him. He actually didn't even buy boots yet, and looking for a Lincoln Sphere, so he's not even worried about his boots. Probably traveling by way of the Shuru... Shukuchi. I, I need to learn how to pronounce that. It's driving me nuts. I'm just going to call it his invis. He's going to travel by that. Illusion has popped off. He's going to scout with these guys. Radiant Top Tower has fallen. Radiant Top Tower fallen. Um, that was pretty much going to happen. It was so low life. Wasn't actually denied or last hit. Now Sock has finally purchased up some boots. And some action up here, middle lane. And Bucky Mad really wants to get himself a nice black hole. But he has to watch out because if he doesn't hit Tidehunter, Tidehunter will stop him with Ravage. Ravage is not up, however. Almost finish up, almost, I think like 300 gold left on the mechanism. I think the recipe is 900. Cinder and Switch, he switched down bottom lane, he has 50 last hits, still deciding, you know, not to go anything in Exor. Going a full Wex build, so perhaps he's going for the max tornado. Wants some max range on that sucker. An EMP, if he can hit it, that is. They made it a little harder so he wasn't so completely imbalanced. A couple months ago, he could pop off his Tornado EMP and... Oh, he's just not doing well. He's not doing so great in this bottom lane. And he has the Shadow Strike. He is regening himself up with Quas. So I don't think he's going to tick away from this yet. He doesn't tick away from it. But this bottom lane is going to be pushed in. And I forget what I was talking about, so I'm going to have to forego that. Oh, yeah, oh, Tornado EMP, like, a couple months ago, before they updated Invoker and made it harder for it to land or just easier for it to escape from, whichever way we want to look at it. Um, you can just pop that off. If you hit with a Tornado, you also hit with an EMP. And there goes your entire team's mana if you get enough of them. Sock using, the, using his invis to deal some damage, although... Lone Druid is pretty big at this point, and the bear, right now, I mean, the bear, you can, he's going to have it back in about a minute, so if he d actually does kill the bear this way, it would be fantastic. Orb of Venom and Phase Boots on the bear. Bear is going to have to go back to base. It cannot, yeah, he's going to go back to base. Wow, those were long, and, ooh, only uh, 70, 70 hit points left on the bear. So now he's going to try to focus on the Lone Druid and see if he can do anything. Well, meanwhile, there's some, uh, there's some biting of thumbs happening in this middle lane. Hope you all read Shakespeare. <laughs> I'm a loser. <laughs> Anyways, Queen of Pain is level 11. Look, Bucking Mad really wants a black.